Did you know that stress is good for you? No, really. They say that a lot of people don't want to stress out or be overstressed or be worried needlessly. But without stress, you don't develop muscles. Without stress, you don't go against the flow. As a matter of fact, without stress, you become fat, flabby, and kind of a mess. You know, you'd wind up vegging out and deteriorating to the point of stagnation. Everything in life that we've experienced as far as being born and living in gravity is a matter of stress. There are a certain amount of stresses that are put upon your life. And spiritually, the same thing is true. Most pastors or teachers at some point in time have used the idea of coal being pressured and formed into a diamond, you know, that if you want to shine like a diamond and be a precious jewel in God's sight, then you have to endure or go through stress. And so, a lot of times, people misunderstand or misapply the uses that God has for stress. Jesus said it this way, in the world you will have tribulation. He told us that. He said flat out, you're going to have tribulation. He didn't say that everyone's going to go through great tribulation, nor did he say that all Christians will be spared great tribulation. Matter of fact, he says some of them are going to go into great tribulation. But he did say that in the world, where you and I are right now, all of us are going to have some tribulation. We're going to go through tribulation, because in the world you shall have tribulation. But he added something else to that. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, maybe that encourages you. Maybe it doesn't. You go, well, yeah, Jesus could do it, but I can't. Well, you see, if Jesus is in you, then Jesus can do through you what he did for himself. Or, in a better way to say it would be, he can do in you what the Holy Spirit did in him for him to be able to overcome. Because Jesus was a human being, and people forget that. He was the Son of Man. He was not extra special man. He was not like, oh, God qualities just waiting to be snapped up. Because you see, if Jesus wasn't fully human and lived a fully human life, he would not be able to identify with us or us with him. But he chose to, and we don't understand how, but he chose to set aside, as it were, or put some other place his godliness or god abilities back into the hands of his father and entrusted them to him so that he became humbled as a man. Just a man. That's right. Jesus. Son of man, just a man. Now, being that he was a sacrifice for God, he was still God in some ways, but he didn't have any special abilities. Everything that he did, he did according to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God overflowed within him. He was the man without measure of the Holy Spirit within him. And so that's why he said that, you know, greater things than we, than he did, he, we could do, or that he would cause or ask that the Father would send the Holy Spirit to us so that we could do those things that he did. So, really, stress is good. And if Jesus has overcome the world, guess what? With the Spirit of God, you could overcome the world. I like that idea. Man, to overcome the world rather than be overcome by the world. The choice is yours. How you live it is up to you. God wants you to go through it and endure it but to overcome it by the word of the Lord and by uh, your testimony and by loving your life even not unto death so that you would even not worry about death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Hey, no problem. We got it covered. Eternal life. Enjoy ordinary days. They who sow in tears shall reap in joy and singing. Psalm 126.5 Our days in the kingdom of God are like seeds scattered upon the ground. We must continue to sleep we must continue to wake up. We must continue to get up in the morning. We must continue to rise. 
Night and day, while the seeds that we sow through our words and deeds sprout and grow and increase, you will reap what you sow, and you'll see what you sow is going to reap upon you either a harvest of, oh boy, or I sure hope you didn't plant a lot of seeds along the way, you know, of weeds, because those weeds will choke out the good that you did, and you don't want that to happen, do you? Most days are not full of excitement, and some days are more difficult to endure than others. But we can learn to enjoy the ordinary and the challenging days of our lives. As the earthly produces first the blade and then the ear and finally the full grain in the ear, so will our lives produce a great harvest from our faithfulness in sowing righteousness. Continue to do what you know is right to do and enjoy the ordinary days. You are one day closer to a joyful harvest. A lot of times people want what they want when they want it. They want to get it now, not later. They want to throw a seed down and bingo, in 24 hours, have it instantly harvested. It's not McDonald's. <laughs> Your life doesn't work that way. You aren't an instant pop-up, you know, like put in a toaster and pop it up and guess what? You're popped heart. No, you're meant for something far better than that. You know, you're supposed to endure your life. You're supposed to go through this life so that you would be a fruit of the Spirit, not just a <laughs> fruit loop. You know, quick, you, you know, your, your life is nice, but you know what? You throw a little milk on it, it becomes soggy. <laughs> No, you're meant to be a fruit of God's Spirit, the Spirit of God working in you, both to do and to will of His good pleasure, but causing you to grow up into that delicious nectar that God can create of your life, that you would be a testimony and a witness to the world of the joy of the Lord and the peace of God and the love from the Father that would be manifested through you to an entire world and even into eternity as they would recall that with which you have done and people will come up to you from out of nowhere in the kingdom of God in the millennial kingdom there will be people who walk up and say thank you and you'll be going really for what well you don't know this but I was so impressed by what you were doing you know and you did and you tell you know blah 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 and they'll tell you all these stories and you'll be going huh I didn't know that <laughs> and yet those are the seeds <coughs> And they will have produced a harvest, not just of souls, but of good works and deeds that you didn't even know you were doing. So don't blow a horn when you think you've done something good and don't tell everyone about it because, you see, your father in secret wants to reward you openly, but he wants you to do it in secret so that he gets the glory, not you. Oh, he'll make sure that you get credit. Believe me, God gives credit where credit is due and he blesses those through you. But Likewise, he'll give you credit in this life as well as blessings in the world to come. But you're called to do it not like, you know, the Gentiles do, who's got to put their name and stamp on it, you know, or like the Jews do who have to stand on the street corner, you know, and let everybody know, you know, that, hey, I'm going to do this, blah, blah, blah. But rather to be like the children of God who do things in secret and your Father rewards you openly.